Thanks for joining us, O'Hara Davis. Uh, uh, well, a few months ago, we won the super lightweight golden contract, uh, beating Tara McKenna in the final. Uh, a great moment for O'Hara. What's happened since then? Uh, when are we going to see you out? I'm seeing plenty of pictures of you training because you're one thing about you never you never took training lightly. I know that. Yeah. Um, since then, I've just been trying to chill out, relax. You know, last year was a very hard year for me because. I fought the semi-final in Feb, and then I think MTK were looking to have the final in June, July times. So what happened is that as soon as the fight was done, I had a few weeks off, then I had to get back in the gym. And I wasn't sure if the fight was in June, July, August, and it was a bit all over the place, and I didn't know what's really going on. So then it got me to the end of September, and I thought, I'm going to take a rest now. I thought, now nah, i just keep on training. So I, I put my body through so much last year, I said to myself, after the fight is done, I need, I need a little bit of a rest, of a chill, just to enjoy life a bit. I'm still in the gym, but I'm still enjoying life. I'm eating fairly unhealthy, but, you know, just enjoying life. But um, I'll be ready to fight again soon. Um, I spoke to MTK about the golden contract, which I spoke about on iFilm last night. Um, I don't think I'm going to take it. You know, it's a, it's, a, you know it's, it's a really good deal that's on offer. Um, and that was my motivation going into the golden contract wow. about getting this big deal in america massive fight purses big fights the big stage in america but i haven't time to think about it and i haven't fully made up my mind yet but i don't think i'm going to take it so, so what would that what options would that leave you because that's you know if you think of money that's decent money for you yeah but you know what i'm trying to not think about the short term money and what I can make in my next two fights. I'm trying to think long term and what's better for my mental health, you know, for one, going out to America, packing a bag, getting on a flight, staying in a hotel for two months before you fight to get acclimatized and traveling up and down. Like, I feel more comfortable when I'm in my own bed. I wake up and I go fight in the O2 or in the your call. I feel more comfortable doing it from my home. And I feel like if you asked me before I turned pro, I would have jumped at this. About I would have jumped at this chance right now to go out to the states to go fight on a big stage. But when I've been a pro for five or six years now, and I think my mindset now is in a different place. I feel comfortable at home, and also it might be smarter for me just to stay here. I think it might be. I think it might be. I think it might be smart. I'm not thinking about my next fight checks. I'm thinking about a world title, which is what I want ultimately. And I feel like it might it, it might be easier to get a world title shot if I stay here. I might earn less in my next few fights, but that's okay. I'm not trying to think about the checks. I'm just trying to think about what's best for me. Yeah, you're showing another side to yourself there, you know, a thinking side, maybe a softer side, I like home, you know, a far cry from the person, the image people have of you, you know, through what you used to be like in a previous sort of part of your career on social media and stuff. You know, you're being very thoughtful. Some might say sensible. Some might be saying mad, turning the money down. But you're showing quite a softer side to you there. You, you need to be at home, your people who you love mm -hmm. around you. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, I have spoken to a few people in that are saying that I'm turning down lots of money, blah, blah, blah. One thing that I've also realised in this game is that it's not about money is about making your smart investments and that's another thing that I'm been, I've been trying to get into the past few years I've been trying to invest it wisely trying to get into the property market which I which I'm still which I'm still on the process trying to do so I feel like I think it's not about earning millions because I've seen fighters earn millions and today they're and, and today they've got nothing left they're all bankrupt and I've seen fighters earn thousands and today they're so wealthy so I'm trying to I'm trying to invest smartly. So it's not about earning the millions or the fix or like the six figure paychecks. It's all about you can earn four or five figures and invest it wisely and live good for the rest of your life if you're smart. So you know, I've just got to think about these things, not thinking about the paycheck. Yeah. How's your property portfolio going? Are you just starting it then? Um in the process now of the third one. I'm in a process now. London, that's not bad, is it? No, I'm not, no, I'm not in London. I'm up in Essex. Essex, right. Essex has got a much better yields than it has in London. London, you buy for a lot and you don't rent for that much. 
in Essex, you can buy for a lot less and you can rent for more. So after looking at the different markets and the different places, the different towns, I think Essex is a real smart investment and Essex is, is also on the rise a lot faster than London is. So what I, yeah, like, like, so in Essex, so what I would buy three for in London, I couldn't even get one. <laughs> yeah, so you, that's a good road to take because yeah, saving money right now isn't doing anything. Nothing. Literally, Nothing, if anything. The bank isn't doing anything for it, so. If anything, it goes down because the value of, of our dollar has been going down every year for the, from probably 50 years ago. Like the, it's like the value of our pound, it's been going down. It's not been going up. So if anything, saving money is actually losing money when you think yeah. about it smartly. Uh, like 100K a few years ago, it would have bought you a five bedroom house. But right now, it couldn't even get you a studio flat in London. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so back back to boxing. And obviously, you're ticking over in the gym and you'll be back in a, few, in a couple of months, I guess. Um, who's training you now? Um, I'm I'm under Will Jones now. Before, are you, are you my now? Last, yeah, I've, you know I've had I've had any coach every fight you could say. Yeah. Um, you know, um, me and Angel Fernandez. I was with Angel Fernandez for one fight when I fought a furry. Then Will Jones and Kevin Mitchell partnered up, and they took care of my last camp. But now Kevin Mitchell is not in a picture no more. So it's just me and Will Jones going forward. Um, we've got Al Smith on the side as well, also helping us to work on a few stuff. Al Smith, he's got so much, he's got so much experience. And I feel like it's good to have him on board just to help out with, you know, with, with a few things here and there. But as of now, it's me and Will Jones. And what, what will Adam go in your corner on nights or you just might go to him once a week for a bit of help? Uh, I'm with him today. I'm with him today. Uh, me and Will are, are both going to go there today. So every Thursday as of now, we're there. Maybe once I start camp, it might be twice a week just to have another another eye watching me. Maybe because it's like I might see a few things that we might not see, or we might see things that I don't see. So I feel like the, I feel like he's just there to help us out. And um, as of now, I'm there once a week um, on fight night. Will he be in a corner? I think so. Yeah, but that's something that we're gonna have to that that all of us are gonna have to sit down and discuss uh, once once I start camp. Yeah, you're in quite a reflective move there today, you know, talking to your property and why you likely to turn down a golden contract. When you, you reflect now on the Cackle and Taylor fights, the two setbacks you've had in your career, is there anything you would have done different for them fights? For the Taylor camp, I would have trained properly. You know, being honest, I never, I never watched him once before the fight. I, I honestly, I, I, never, I never watched him once. I just thought to myself, um, I just thought, I just thought to myself, you know, I knocked out Dave Matthews. I beat everyone. I'm just gonna go in there, knock out this guy as well. Eat no difference to the other guys. And I feel like pride really got in the way. But what do you expect? I was young, new as a pro, and you know, as you get older, you've learned. And through that loss, I've learned. I've got to train. I'm never gonna get to a point where I'm where I think I'm O'Hara Davis or I'm meant to win. Like I can fight, I, I can, I can fight a bum. And he can beat me if I don't work hard. I can fight a complete journeyman. If I don't work hard, I'm not guaranteed to win no fights because I've got a little bit of a name now. Reflecting on the Catawa fight, I would have knocked him out. Never leave it to the judges. I left it to the, I left it to them. And when you leave it to them, you know, you know, they saw something different than what me and everyone and, and what everyone in the crowd saw. We all saw something different than what the judges thought. So Next time, if if I could turn him back, I would have knocked him out. I could have, I, I could have knocked him out. I had him out of his feet in round five, round six. I could have had him out, but I let it go to the judges. But you know, you can't. You live and you learn. Um, I've come back stronger. I'm doing a lot better than what he's doing since that fight. He hasn't done anything. He's been mandatory for the past five, six years. He ain't getting that world title shot. <laughs> And since that fight, I've gone on to do big things. I won the golden contract, but I'm about to turn down a massive deal in America. Who's he been fighting? Journeyman? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, you talk about, you know, you still, you know, it was like you've been quiet for a few months. You know, we've seen a bit more social media the last couple of weeks with you. You know, you've been commenting a couple more interviews lately, but uh, they're still talking about you. Sam Maxwell seems to have a bit of a 
It's a gripe with you, doesn't it? A minute. Yeah, Sam Max. So um, you know, I, I used to I used to I used to spar Sam back in back at Sheffield when he was on a GB squad. Me and me and the guys at Simsy Gym used to go there. I used to spar him, Joe Cordina, all of the young amateurs back then coming through. Now they're established pros. But Sam Maxwell, he was good as an amateur. He ain't good as a pro. He's not like he ain't he ain't good. He ain't no good as a pro boxer. And he's old now. How old is he? 32, 33 years old. Right. And I feel really I feel really bad for him because out of everyone that came through from the GB squad, they've all done big things. But Cody's about to go and have a massive world title shot. Everyone else, they're all doing big things. But Sam Maxwell is the only one that ain't done nothing. He's the only one that ain't spoken about. You don't get no airtime, you don't get no he like fans don't care about him. No one cares about Sam Maxwell. And he's the only one from that GB squad that ain't doing nothing. Look what George Race is now doing, doing big things. Daniel the bar doing big things. Maxwell's the only one. They ain't doing nothing. And I feel safe for him because in this next fight, he's gonna get whooped. And I spied that came in his crown two or three weeks ago, he come down to London and we sparred and, you know, we've done a good 10 rounds and he's looking in good shape, in great shape. And Sam Maxwell, he's not going to win this fight and he's old. So once he loses this fight, when's he going to go? Probably the end of his boxing career. Retire. 32, 33 years old. Won 14 against 14 bums, lost one in his first step up. Um, so he had been trying to call me out, but that fight won't happen because he ain't going to win. If he beat Akeem Ennis Brown, then 100% the fight, it could happen. But I'm 100% confident that Akeem is going to whoop him. Not just win, he's going to win every round convincingly. And before I let you go, I just want to ask you a couple more things. Um, what's your opinion on YouTubers boxing? Oh, it's great. Playing on Triller and stuff. I wonder if you might have a different take to a lot of boxers. It's great for the sport. Yeah. It's great for the sport. I thought you would say that, actually. Yeah. Look at people like Jake Paul. One thing I would say, they're like so like these guys fight and they're making millions. They're making millions. They wouldn't be making millions if the boxing fans wasn't if they weren't into it. Boxing fans are there paying because they like it. And they got a few boxers, a few boxing fans that think nah nah nah. Like, but if it makes money, it makes sense. And these fights only sell because boxing fans are there paying for it. And it makes and and like and also it brings it just bring it just bring eyes into the sport of boxing. It gives it attention. People speaking about boxing now. People that weren't fans back then are now boxing fans now because of these guys. And also and also it makes a great undercard for guys like us. I would love to fight on the undercard of Jake Paul. Come on, I would love to do that. It makes a it makes a big show, a great undercard, a new platform for guys like us to fight. And also, Jake Paul ain't a bad boxer. I feel like if he was to, you know, he's a pro now, if he was to come over down to England, he could win a British title easily. Jake Paul, he could beat most of these guys. He could beat, he could, I won't say he's a more level, but he's easily British level, easily. But these guys, I don't like them. They're just a bit jealous of them because they're not from boxing and yet they've now come into boxing and they're making a lot more than what us boxers are even making. Don't be jealous of Jake Paul. Appreciate it. Come on. I tell you what, I bet you wish there was a YouTuber who could fight was around your weight or a bit heavier, wouldn't you? Oh, 100%. 100%. You'd be on that, you'd be on that Twitter annoying him every minute, wouldn't you? It's a fight I would take hands down, but these guys, I'm not big enough to fight against these guys. These guys yeah. are not looking at this pros that ain't got a massive name. They're only fighting people that have got mega names, and, and it only makes sense. I see certain pros trying to go online, call them out. I'm thinking, so you're trying to call out Jake Paul. You got a thousand followers up on Instagram. This guy's got like 15 million followers. You think this guy's gonna fight you? You think this guy's even gonna look at what you wrote and respond to you? Hell no. Chill. Stay in your own lane and let and let these known guys fight each other and just hope that you're blessed enough one day to get a fight on his undercard. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, it's been brilliant catching up with you. You always got something to say, something different, and uh, it's great to hear you in such a reflective mood and. Uh, you know, putting your, your opinion across on, on these YouTubers and why they're good for boxing. Uh, I can't thank you enough for speaking to me again. Uh, thank you for having me, Steve. Thank you. For all boxing info, news and latest interviews, amateur and pro, across the north, click and subscribe. VIP boxing promotions. Also, 
Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.